الحمد لله الغني الحميد فاطر السماوات والأرض العلي العظيم جعل لكم من أنفسكم أزواجا ومن الأنعام أزواجا يذرأكم فيه ليس كمثله شيء وهو السميع البصير أحمد ربي سبحانه وأشكره على آلائه ومنه وخيراته التي نعلم والتي لا نعلم وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له رب الملائكة والروح يخلق ما يشاء ويختار فاطر السماوات والأرض وكل شيء عنده بمقدار وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله الأمين خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين وبعث رحمة للعالمين بشيرًا ونذيرًا بين يدي الساعة اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت وسلمت وباركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وعلى أزواجه وأصحابه وذريته والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين الذين فازوا بعز الدنيا وفي الآخرة بالنعيم المقيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وابتغوا إليه الوسيلة وجاهدوا في سبيله لعلكم تفلحون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون أما بعد Dear respected brothers and sisters we live in a developed society. We live in a civil society. And many of us believe we live in the best place in the world. And some of our politicians and lawmakers will go as far as saying, we are the best nation ever to live. There are many others that had such a thinking that no longer exist. However, as we live in these modern developed societies, whenever we are in need of nourishment and sustenance, and I mean dire need, whenever we need protection from harm, whenever we need relief from disaster, it is as easy as picking up your phone and dialing 3911. And within minutes, or sometimes seconds, law enforcement will be there to provide you protection. Or if you're harmed or hurt, paramedics are there to administer resuscitation. Or if you really, really, really are hungry and you're about to die, they will even bring you a sandwich like a kid call 911 and ask for them to bring McDonald's. We live in a society of instant gratification and at the same time, we are accustomed to receiving help and needs by the press of a button. That is a good thing. However, there is a negative aspect. When things don't come fast enough, when we don't get all of our desires fulfilled, we start to despair. We lose patience and we lose faith. Think about it, brothers and sisters. If by dialing 911, you will get all the help you want, you and I are forgetting that it takes time to dial those three numbers, and when you do, and somebody picks up that phone, you have to explain to them what your emergency is. And you should pray to Allah, your accent is clear enough for them to understand you. If not, you will be dead before the paramedics get there. When we have a geopolitical problem, we call sometimes the United Nations. Dear respected brothers and sisters, while doing all of that, we forget to call the one 
entity that has all the might and power, all the capability and means, and all the will to make things happen, and that is Allah. And you can call upon Allah faster than you can dial 911. You might think I'm telling you fantasy. You might say to me, brother, I have called upon Allah for 10 years about something he has not responded. That is because you and I do not understand the criteria for our dua to be accepted. And if we were to make a valid dua, how Allah responds. So my dear respected brothers and sisters, let us refocus upon the power of dua and why you should call upon Allah first before you dial 911. 911 is means, sabab, to get something. It is not the objective. It is the means to an end, not the end. So, why is this important? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us the importance of dua and whom you should be calling in the first place. If you were hungry, starving, if you had a famine, it will take a long time for United Nations to bring the food to you. That is fact. Our brothers and sisters in Yemen are dying in the tens of thousands because the United Nations doesn't bring the food fast enough. Our brothers and sisters were dying in the tens of thousands in Somalia, in Ethiopia, when they had famine, because United Nations can never bring help enough. Our brothers and sisters are waiting for the United Nations to free them from the concentration camps that somebody called vocational training centers. It will never come fast enough. Who is putting out the fires that are burning in Australia that can be seen from outer space? Has anybody put out those fires? What happened when California burned? Who put out that fire? Nobody could. So therefore, dear respected brothers and sisters, when you need help to come faster, you must call upon one that has A, the ultimate power and authority. B, the ultimate means and capabilities. And C, the ultimate ability to deliver in a timely fashion. That is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah tells us when people call other things, Allah explained it perfectly well in Surah Tufatir. And that one surah is enough for us to reflect upon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A'udhu billahi minash shaytani rajim. Ya ayyuhan nas, O mankind, idhkuru ni'mat Allahi alaykum. Remember the ni'mah of Allah upon you. Hal min khaliqin ghayru Allahi yarzukukum minas samai wal arm? Is there another creator that gives you sustenance, risk from the heavens and the earth? La ilaha illahu. None except him. So my dear respected brothers and sisters, when we have an issue wherein there is famine, there is strife, and people need sustenance, <coughs> they should be calling upon Allah first. Because Allah is a razak. One of the reasons why we call others to help is when we need sustenance and nourishment. What happens when you need protection from harm? If you need protection from harm, who can protect you better than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Who can? Who can deflect a bullet coming your way? Who can stop the earthquake from swallowing your house, swallowing up your house? Or who can stop the tidal wave from coming? Allah says, Qul man min barri wal Who can help you in the darkness uh, in, you know, on land and on sea? When people are about to drown, if they're in that beautiful cruise, and that cruise ship gets stranded into sea, who do you think they're calling? They, everybody calls upon Allah because they know no one can help at that moment. When we're in true need 
and when we know that nobody can help, that's when we call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you need risk, call upon Allah. If you need protection, call upon Allah. If you need assistance after a disaster, call upon Allah. My dear respected brothers and sisters, we have forgotten to call upon Allah. Because we think Allah takes too long to respond. 911 gets it faster. If you call Congress, you think the help will come faster. But my dear respected brothers and sisters, Allah tells us this in Surah Al-Fatih. In tad'uhum la yasma'u du'a'akum. When people call upon others than Allah. Allah says if you call them, they don't even hear you. Walau sami'u mastajabu lakum. If they could hear you, they cannot respond to you. My dear respected brothers and sisters, how long have we been calling somebody to fix the Muslim issues of the Muslims? Whether it is Palestine, whether it is Iraq, we've been calling for two decades the Palestine. Our brothers and sisters in Palestine have been calling for half a century. Nothing has happened because we're calling the wrong people. Allah is the one that has the quick response. And if you think Allah is not responding fast enough, because you need to understand that Allah responds in one of three ways, like the Prophet ﷺ taught us. He said, no believer makes a dua, except that in a dua which does not have the following, that it doesn't involve sin. You don't ask Allah, oh Allah help me to go to the nightclub. Allah is not going to respond to that dua. It cannot involve sin, or it cannot involve the breaking of the bond of kinship. You cannot ask Allah, I want to cut off ties with my father. And, subhanallah, this dua should be of something good. It can be sin, it can be breaking the bonds of kinship, okay? Except that Allah will respond in one of three ways. He said, Either Allah will advance you what you're asking for, or Allah will save for you what you're asking for, Yawmul Qiyamah and beyond. Wa imma an yasrifa anhu min asu'i mithlaha. Or Allah will save you from an evil equal to the good you're asking for. So if you make to Allah a sincere dua that deserves a response for 10 years, you need to know either of two things. The answer is waiting for you in Jannah, or Allah has forgiven you equal amount of sins, or has saved you from harm. We need to understand how Allah responds. Today, if you need coffee, you have instant coffee. If you need anything, if you go to McDonald's, you order in the drive-thru. By the time you put in the order and you get to the window, it's ready. Because we're now accustomed to instant gratification. When our dua is not responded to instantly, we stop making them. And the Prophet ﷺ says, Dua will be accepted as long as you're not hasty and you don't give it up. And many of us, that's what we do. We're hasty because we want a quick response. And when Allah does not respond, we abandon the dua. We should change how we think, brothers and sisters, because when the Anbiya made dua, Allah responded to each and every single one of them quickly when the time was right. بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وإياكم بما فيه من الآيات والذكر الحكيم أقول قول هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد. Dear respected brothers and sisters, Allah سبحانه وتعالى tells us in سورة فاطر. He says, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. يا أيها الناس أو mankind أنتم الفقراء إلى الله. والله هو الغني الحميد. O mankind, 
We are faqir. We are all in need of Allah. And Allah is al-ghaniyul hamid. Allah is the one who is rich, sufficient, needs no one's help, and has all the means and capabilities. That's what it means when you say Allah is al-ghani. He has sufficient everything. And we are all in need of him. My dear respected brothers and sisters, we don't reflect upon that. We do not reflect upon the fact that we are all in need of Allah. We think that because we have access to food in America, we feel that we can buy houses on, uh, on credit, it's, uh, we can buy cars, we have this fake sense of having everything, we sometimes think we don't need Allah. So therefore, we only call Him last minute and expect Him to respond. So we should change how our relationship is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because all the people that we call, including 911, you think they come fast enough, only the help of Allah comes the fastest. Example. Ibrahim alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him an indirect command. It wasn't an indirect command. An indirect command where he saw he slaughtered his son Ismail in a dream. And his son Ismail alayhi salam said, قَالَ يَا أَبَتِ فَعَلْ مَا تُؤْمَرُ سَتَجِدُنِي إِنْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ مِنَ الصَّابِرِينَ He says, Oh my father, do what Allah has commanded. Ibrahim took Ismail, laid him down, sharpened the knife, and put it in his neck. فَلَمَّا أَسْلَمَا وَتَلَّهُ لِلْجَبِينَ When Ibrahim was slaughtering him, وَنَادَيْنَاهُ أَنْ يَا إِبْرَاهِيمُ قَدْ صَدَّقْتَ الرُّؤْيَا Ibrahim actually followed through and then he saw that Ismail was swapped. Imagine Jibril alayhi salam from the high heavens descended so quickly before a human being can cut the neck of a child. If he was traveling by light speed, he would not even be here yet. Ismail would have been dead a long time ago. Can you imagine how fast Jibril came to make that change? Allahu Akbar. Imagine Ibrahim. They stripped his clothes. They tossed him into a fire, a huge fire that was built just to punish this one young man. Between the time they tossed him in, I mean, they're testing him in fire here. He would have died on the way down from smoke inhalation. It takes literally less than a minute to die. Many people who die in fires are not, they're not dead because of the fire. It is smoke inhalation that kills him. He would have died on the way down. What did Allah say? قُلْنَا يَا نَارُ كُونِ بَرْدًا وَسَلَامًا عَلَىٰ Ibrahim. Allah changed the physics of fire when Ibrahim is going in. Subhanallah. You think Allah cannot respond fast enough? Oh yes, He can. Allah can respond so fast, it is faster than the fastest thing in the universe that we know of, and that is the speed of light. That's how fast Allah can respond. It is because our dua is weak. It's because we don't even have faith in the dua. When you call upon Allah, you must have faith that Allah will hear and respond. If you call upon Allah reluctantly and having no yaqeen in what you say, Allah has no need to respond. That's the difference, brothers and sisters. Allah has shown us when Ayub was sick for nearly a decade, no one could cure him because shaitan made him sick so that way he will lose his faith. Allah says, immediately we respond, That's how quickly Allah responds. What happened to Ayyub who was tossed off the ship because he thought he was the bad omen, swallowed by a fish? In the bottom, Yunus, in the bottom of the ocean, what can you do at that point? Imagine if you fell into the water, you can't swim. It wasn't like he was a swimmer per se. They tossed him overboard. You, if, if a fish came and swallowed you, what do you say? You say immediately, I'm dead. That's exactly what you'll say. What do you think Ayub said? When there's no hope, you're in the belly of a fish. He said, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al-zalimin. He said the only words that cannot be heard by anything living except Ar-Rahman, the one who is ever living. 
فَاسْتَجَبْنَا له. And now it says, we immediately responded. Yunus. Allah Akbar. You might think, oh, these are just prophets, that's why. Allah will respond to anyone. وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمُ دُعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ Allah says, just call upon me, I will respond. And that's all we have to do, respected brothers and sisters. And I would like to conclude by saying that our community was blessed with the opportunity and the privilege to be invited by our delegate, Delegate Ayala, to give the opening invocation at the Virginia State Legislature. They invited us to go give the opening dua before they opened their session. And so we went to Alila al Hamd on Wednesday. Several of us, not only from here, Dar al Hijra, some people from Adams as well. And after we gave that invocation, one of the um, delegates of this one of Falls Church, she approached me to uh, thank us for being there. And she told me something interesting. She said, a decade ago or so, when they invited a Muslim to give the opening invocation, as soon as he started giving it, most, if not all, the Republicans stood up, turned their backs, and walked out of the room. They didn't want to see or hear a Muslim give a dua. Yesterday, everyone stayed put where they were, and they stood longer than expected. Everybody stood for a period of nearly 10 minutes. And she said, look how far we have come as a nation. And others came by and said, what an invocation. I am a Christian and we need invocations like that. The dua of a Muslim resonates with everybody because we call upon Allah and no in between. If we only made more dua, Allah will solve more problems. If we rely upon Allah rather than lawmakers, we'll get quicker solutions. Brothers and sisters, imagine now they want Muslims to make dua to open a legislative session. We have come a long way and we need to make more dua so that Allah will respond more. إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَمَلَائِكَتَهُ يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت وسلمت وباركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك لنا فيما أعطيت وقنا شر ما قضيت فإنك تقضي بالحق ولا يقضى عليك اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وانصر الإسلام والمسلمين واغفر لجميع موت المسلمين يا عزيز يا كريم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين